So you want to see some more weird stuff, huh? Not to worry, history is full of it. Today we're going to look at my top 15 ugliest handguns before the year 1900. I narrowed it down because there are plenty of ugly firearms in the 20th century, both handguns and rifles, whereas I didn't find a whole lot of uh, rifles and muskets before that time that I find particularly ugly. All personal preference, and this is entirely based on aesthetics. Nothing to do with functionality, although some of these are dubious in that regard too. Okay, let's start. So the first one isn't too bad, only just about makes it on the list. Belgian pinfire blunderbuss pistol from the 19th century. So it's kind of odd that something like this would show up because I generally like blunderbuss barrels, especially the brass ones, they can look quite nice. In this case, it's really the shape of the handle mostly and, and really the overall outline that breaks it for me. Uh, this is pretty much a 90 degree angle on the grip, but it's still curved. I've never liked that. Next one is pepper boxes with too many damn barrels. I actually like pepper boxes, some at least, particularly the Mariette type, which this is, can look pretty good with a ring trigger. Uh, this is Belgian, the top one has 24 barrels, the bottom one has 18 barrels, and yeah, this is just too many barrels. It looks ridiculous. It looks like a hornet's nest or something. Uh, what's also ridiculous is the loading time. It would take between 40 and 60 seconds to load all of these because this is all muzzle loading. You have to pour in the powder and the, the ball, ram it home, cap it with a percussion cap for every single one of those 18 or 24. The next one is the handgun. Now, I'm cheating a little bit here. This is not really a handgun, except that, well, it's called a handgun, so I included it anyway. This is um, arguably more of a long arm. So the top one is from southern Germany between 1450 and 1500, and the bottom one is a matchlock handgun from around 1500. So here the ugliness comes just from how crude it is. Now, you can't really blame it because it's literally the first type of handheld firearm that came up. So. It's basically a miniature cannon lashed to a stick. At least the first ones were lashed with cord. Later ones were fixed with these iron bands that you see here. So it's not quite as crude, but still pretty bad. Then the grenade launcher of the time. The top one is a flintlock hand mortar from 1740. And below is either a grenade or fireworks launcher from around 1600. This one's wheel lock. If you like the top one, fair enough, I suppose, but the bottom one, um, that's a little fishy looking, don't you think? There's something vaguely whale-like about it, and it makes it look really ridiculous. In fact, not even that vaguely. Even the top one, I mean, it's got a pretty standard looking musket stock with the flintlock. It's nothing unusual about that. That part looks quite nice. But then you've got the super stubby, mini cannon attached to it and that just breaks the overall aesthetic in my opinion. So these were used to shoot round grenades with fuses. This one here is an iron grenade from the Thirty Years War. They would light the fuse, stuff it in there and then fire it over a wall or otherwise you know, bombard an area that they couldn't otherwise directly shoot at. Now the next one I kept shifting back and forth in the order. Now the order here overall is pretty loose because there's a lot of hideous stuff in here where, you know, it's ugly for different reasons and it's hard to argue, okay, is this one worse than the other one or whatever? So it's just uh, pretty vaguely ordered, but yeah, this one... I can, I can find some redeeming aspects about it, let's put it that way. So this is a wallet-style palm pistol, a chambered in 5mm centerfire. This one was patented by Charles Bellet in 1879. It's got six chambers. It's actually got six individual firing pins. I can appreciate the design for how innovative it is, but at the same time, just the open frame makes it look unfinished. And basically what I could totally see with this is a sci-fi version of it. Like if you modify this a little bit and, and kind of updated it, quote-unquote, to have a sci-fi aesthetic. I, I think that would totally work, actually. As it is, on the one hand, I kind of like it and, and find it pretty cool. On the other hand, I can't deny its ugliness. So, mixed feelings about that one. 
Not so much about the next one, a Remington Vest pocket pistol. Uh, this is chamber 22 short, a very anemic cartridge. Uh, and this one is you know, late 19th century. And the problem here is it's minimalist and not in a good way. And also aesthetically to me the shape collides a bit with itself because it's pretty boxy on the one hand but then it's got very strong curves in the outline. There are also some fancy decorated versions as you can see in the bottom picture. But if you ask me no amount of engraving and mother of pearl handles can save this one. Then we've got the little all right which would have made it to the, onto the list by means of its silly name alone. This is a 22 caliber palm revolver. Now you'll see a lot of palm pistols here. In fact, I could have probably filled the entire list with just palm pistols. Many of them are really ugly and there are plenty like the Chicago Protector, for example, and a bunch of others, but I wanted to limit it just to a few that particularly assault my aesthetic sensibilities, if you will. Now this one has a trigger on top of the barrel where usually a front side would be on most handguns. It's mostly rectangular and it's got some curved outlines. The tiny revolver cylinder in there that also looks kind of almost misplaced. German puffer pistols. These are wheel lock pistols from around 1580. And, well, you may say, how could you possibly say anything against these, gal? They have pommels! Yes, yes they do, but they are not removable and they are just there to make it easier to draw the thing from the holster. I don't mind the pommels. Not a problem with that. The angle, that's the problem. This looks pretty bad, especially where, considering where the trigger guard and the trigger is positioned. You would expect it a lot further up and not like near the end of the handle where you've got this really awkward angle now it gets worse i can't even how are you even supposed to hold that and then operate the trigger i guess you just literally hold it up like this and then you sight over top no nope 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 the angle is what really breaks it i mean not necessarily just the angle it's the angle plus the positioning of the trigger guard and trigger. I think that's what really breaks it here. The overall shape would still be ugly even if the trigger guard was in the corner where you would normally expect it. Now the next one also has the overly sharp 90 degree angle. Uh, at least it gets the basic firearm shape a little more. The trigger is at least in the position you would expect. In this case it's the simplicity that breaks it to me. Some people may like it but to me it looks like a, the top of a cane and there were actually some uh, canes with integrated firearms but this just by itself also the under hammer I don't think really adds to the aesthetics yeah so this is an American under hammer boot pistol 28 caliber percussion from the 19th century and um, yeah I, I was thinking back and forth where do I actually put this it's not super ugly but it's pretty bad in my opinion next one is the Chenu revolver 20 shot pinfire it's pretty respectable to cram 20 shots into a revolver you know in terms of design yep I gotta respect that but it's so ugly like look at the thing <laughs> and also I imagine with considering how high the barrel is relative to the handle, this is pretty much the muzzle flipper. You know, the recoil and muzzle flip is greater the further away the, the barrel is from the top of your hand, essentially. So this is very far. Now, probably not really substantial recoil with that kind of ammunition, but yeah, this is not about the functionality anyway, it's about looks. This looks like a bad Photoshop job where you copy a section in the center of the revolver and paste it on top and then move the rest up. Even the hammer is ugly on this one. Then another revolver. This one here is by Jacob Shaw, an under hammer percussion revolver in uh, 30 caliber. Patented in 1857 and uh, <laughs> believe it or not this has got a set trigger and a tube sight for accuracy. Yeah look at this stubby tiny little grip that you could barely hold onto with one finger and the really short barrel and talk about accuracy. 
I don't even know how you would hold on to this to aim at all. The tube sight is inside of the cylinder pin. So you would actually aim through the revolver. That's pretty interesting and it's a very innovative design, but so ugly. <laughs> Next up, close competition. This is the Brun La Trige 6mm semi-automatic pocket pistol. Uh, this one was patented in 1868 and then manufactured in 1890. And, um, yeah, again, minimalistic in the bad sense. This basically looks like there's something missing. When you first look at it, it's like, somebody took this, the slide off, didn't they? Nope. There is no slide. This is the thing. And the bottom one is the prototype, which is even worse because of that kind of trigger, me trigger mechanism. And uh, yeah, I mean, the ring trigger looks okay, but it's confusing to the eyes. It, it, does, it looks like it's a salvaged part of another handgun that was just haphazardly made to work, even though it's not haphazard. Obviously, it's arguably a pretty decent design, but aesthetics there's something missing here then we've got the duck's foot it's a flintlock pistol the top one is british from 1780 and the bottom one is i couldn't find any information about but i just had to include it because the duck's foot in and of itself is ugly enough with the multiple barrels sticking out at different angles but then they had to make it worse by spreading them out even more and slapping spikes onto the grip if you're wondering about the practicality Accuracy obviously is not a factor here. Uh, this was the idea was to clear out an enemy deck before boarding a ship. So you just point in the general direction, there's a crowd of people, and you hit something. Can you imagine the recoil? Multiple barrels going off at the same time. They, these were all full charges in each barrel. That's a wrist breaker for sure. And if, you, if that's not enough barrels for you, how about this one? Barrels galore. What could be uglier than this, right? Well, how about this palm pistol, patented by an Italian named Catello Tribuzio from around 1890? Yeah, um, similar problem as with some other palm pistols. It's very boxy. So it's just a, essentially a box with a barrel sticking out on top. And then, I mean, I can see why it's shaped the way it is. It's to make it more ergonomic and the curvature in the back makes sense for that. But it just, again, it collides. It's a curved box and then the, the ring trigger makes it even worse. And the number one on my ugliest list is the Apache revolver or Arguably, it should be pronounced Apache because it's actually French. It has nothing to do with Native Americans. And this was patented by Louis Dolan in the, in the late 1860s. This one then became popular with gangsters in Paris in around 1900. And so, yeah, it's a knuckle duster and a knife and a revolver all in one. And you can fold it up. Now, arguably, when it's all folded, it doesn't even necessarily look that bad. I think this is kind of okay. But as soon as you open it up, it's, it unveils its face of hideousness. It's got just a revolver cylinder and frame and trigger, no barrel. The rest is all knuckle duster and blade. Now the blade wouldn't be so bad, but I think it's, in this case, it's really mainly the knuckle duster, especially when it's folded up and it's curved like that. Uh, apparently, you know, somebody has said that it's not actually that uncomfortable to hold on to but it's certainly uncomfortable to look at. It's not easy on the eyes at all. Anyway, let me know what you think. Are there any other firearms before 1900 that you find particularly ugly? So I hope you found it amusing. Check out the links in the video description down below. There's gonna be a link to Patreon and also Twitch because I've started streaming regularly on Twitch lately. So if you like gaming videos or live hangouts, Q and A's, that sort of thing, then you can follow me there. All right. Thanks and have a good one, folks.